Good morning, space fans and race enthusiasts, or is it the other way around? We enjoy saying that here because it's not very often we get to do so. We are live at the 19th Great Moon Buggy Race from the beautiful and historic U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. This is, of course, the home to Space Camp, Aviation Challenge to Great uh, programs down here that help teach kids and students about, and even some adults, about uh, aeronautics and astronautics. But of course, this is also home to the Welcome Center, the official Welcome Center of the Marshall Space Flight Center, right down here in beautiful North Alabama. We're expecting uh, clear skies today. Yesterday was a great day for racing in day one, as students and student teams from across the world came here to Huntsville, Alabama, to take their shot at running their own moon buggies across the course here at the Space and Rocket Center. We had a great turnout. Nearly 90 teams have joined us, once again, from places around the country, around the globe, I should say. Uh, states represent almost every state in the nation, as well as countries including India, Germany, Italy, Russia, even the United Arab Emirates fielded a team for this year's event. And we're glad you could join us. My name is Bill Hubscher. We'll be bringing you the coverage throughout the day, as well as my broadcast partner, Lori Meggs, who is at the start slash finish line over underneath the space shuttle, a full mock-up of the space shuttle, just one of the great, uh, great installations here at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. The uh, race has outpaced its own previous record. Last year, we had more than 70 teams take the course over two days, and we look set to beat that number by a fair margin. This year, it looks to be quite an event. Uh, as you can see, the first buggy going through the final safety checks before heading up to the starting line. And uh, Lori, you're standing by down there. I am. I'm here, Bill. Good morning. Good morning to you. Well, I'm here with the first team. Good morning. Good morning. You ready to race? You're already here right at the, at the start. Tell me your name. Name. <laughs> and your name? Janisa. You ready to go, huh? Ready to go. Better than yesterday? All right. They are ready to go, Bill. We'll let them get started. How about it? All right. Thanks very much. As we had mentioned, the uh, teams are going to be running in order from the way they finished last year. And last year, team number one, Teodoro Aguilar Mora Vocational High School from Puerto Rico were our overall winners. They were new to the Moon Buggy Race in 2010, but their buggies achieved seventh and ninth place among all racers. And in 2011, they took the top two spots. Teams one and two came in first and second in the high school division. Team one finished the course in three minutes and 18 seconds last year. And right now they are the time to beat at an unofficial time of three minutes and 24 seconds that they said yesterday. And they are off. The first buggy is underway in day two of the 19th Great Moon Buggy Race. Going underneath the Pathfinder shuttle. Already headed up now that first hill, taking that second obstacle at 18 seconds in. That is already a great mark. We've seen that most of the leaders were able to crest that hill in about 20 seconds, so they've done so already. Over obstacles three and four. This is the difficult part. We call it Lunar Tick Curve. Yes, lots of moon and space puns you'll see here today. As they take that turn, it used to be a much more vicious turn. We'll explain to you more about that a little bit later. They've tried to even it out, so uh, some of the racers have a, have a safer time of it. Safety being one of the main concerns here at the Great Moon Buggy Race. They are just flying through this course. Less than one minute in, once again, we said the, uh, oh, that could be a penalty, though. Every time you hit a cone and swing a little bit too far to the rope, that is considered a penalty. A minute and we watch them finish. We want to welcome a very special guest. Charlie Bolden is here. It's not often that we get celebrities. I'm not a celebrity. <laughs> Charlie Bolden, of course, the administrator for for the uh, for NASA, uh, joining us. And thanks very much for making the trip. It's, it's good great, to see you down great. here. I've been trying to get here for years, and so it, this is my first time ever seeing this, and it's just incredible. We're, th we're glad you brought the good weather with you too, though. I wish I could say I did that, but I'm glad the weather's good. <laughs> So did you get a chance to look along uh, Pit Road to see some of the some of the buggies that they've been uh, that they've been building? I did. We came out a little bit earlier, so I had a chance first of all to go meet the, the folk in Pit Road, some of you know some of the Marshall folk and some of the engineers from out in town. That was really good, and asked them a little bit about what kinds of malfunctions they see and everything, and then kind of had a chance to meet some of the teams. 
fortunately met the team from Puerto Rico. Uh, they're pretty impressive, to tell you. And uh, and then met the team from Jupiter. The the second their second buggy didn't fare too well, but, but that's so I hope I didn't jinx them or anything. But, uh, but it's been really good, and I look forward to meeting some more of the teams as we go through. But it's pretty good stuff. You get to see a lot of good, amazing ingenuity with these teams. We, we did. One of the things that I did want to ask you, Charlie, this morning was is you've had an opportunity to take a look around, and, and as you spend more of your day here, one of the things that we try to focus on with the education aspect of this is the working together as units, working together as teams, and then also working together uh, with, with everyone as a larger group here at the competitions because you get to meet other people on the course and you get to learn by what other people do. And, and how does that translate back to what NASA does? It's exactly what I try to tell people all the time. People ask me a lot, you know, what, what's the most memorable thing from, from the, your time in NASA? Meaning, what was the best thing that happened while you were flying? And then I have to tell them, it wasn't while I was flying. It was, you know, although every one of my four missions were thrilling, I, the one that I cherished the most was my last, when I had Sergei Krikalov and Vladimir Titov, uh, two Russian cosmonauts who brought their families here. And, you know, we trained together for two years, and we have been friends ever since. And that was back in 1994. These kids are doing exactly that. You know, they, they meet kids from other countries, from other schools, from other parts of the country. Uh, and they have a 24-hour period of time, 48 hours, to get to know them. My hope is that they would want to go visit them in their own environment. And, and that's what we try to do at NASA. You know, we're, international cooperation is really big for us. It's really important. We can't do the exploration that we want to do in the future without having international partners to do that. And they're, they're seeing that firsthand. So what do you hope that some of the kids get out of, out of this event, even though they're only here for a short period of time? Well, I hope they, I hope they enjoy Huntsville and want to come back. And uh, I don't know whether they get a chance to tour Marshall, and I haven't had a chance to see whether, whether we give them that benefit. But if we don't, then maybe it entices them to come back because we need a lot of them to come here and be engineers. Uh, so that's, that's one thing I hope. Uh, the other thing I hope, you know, Huntsville's a, a, a typical southern town in its hospitality. And so it's a great place for people to come to the U.S. to get a good flavor for who we are and what we are. And uh, so I'm, I'm hoping also that, that they'll go away from here having had just a tremendous positive experience in the United States and want to come back again. So. It's, wonderful. it's wonderful to see uh, that emphasis that what we've been putting on so much on, on this STEM disciplines as, yeah, there, there goes Jupiter High School. Oh, I'm sorry, not Jupiter High School. This is Arab High School, team number two. Trekking on through. Let's see, how's our time? Oh, not even two minutes just yet. So uh, really quickly, though, we, we, we put such a great emphasis on these STEM disciplines, and I think that's a wonderful thing to see them put them and to see how they realize how these are used in everyday, in everyday experiences. I, I think it's great. You know, I was asking a couple of the teams what kind of criteria do they have, and they were talking about size and weight and all other kinds of stuff, but they've had to, as I've said before, they've had to spend some time trying to understand what the teacher's telling them in the classroom because when you start building something like this, you know, theory is one thing, but now to, to put it into practice. And that's, they're, they're perfect candidates for becoming astronauts one of these days. Having, having to make repairs on the fly, uh, those kinds of things, that's what happens in a typical space flight. You know, things don't always go right. And so you, you, don't, you can't take it back to the factory, you gotta fix it on the fly. And, and that's what they're learning how to do out here. Well, Charlie, thanks very much for taking the time as well as for making the trip down here. Hopefully we'll see you here next year. <laughs> Let's head back to the starting line with Lori Meggs. All right, Bill, I'm here with the Academy of Arts, Careers, and Technology from Reno, Nevada. This is their second year at the race. Tell me your name. Gabrielle. And? Daniel. Did you race yesterday? Yes. How'd it go? We did pretty good. We got a 348, 40, I think. Wow, that is impressive. Uh, how can you uh, build on that time today and, and cut it? Well, we plan on just pedaling like crazy. <laughs> I like that. You need a t-shirt that says that. Pedal like crazy. All right, this is Reno, Nevada, the Academy of Arts, Careers, and Technology. Back to you, Bill. They're about to start. All right, thanks very much, Lori. As we see uh, Arab High School team number two now crashing the top of the hill. Making a pretty good pace. They may not exactly be able to finish uh, towards the top of it, but they're doing very well so far. Uh, one of the uh, visitor, one of the team members, I should say, from ARAB High School joining us now. You are from ARAB, yes? Yes, I'm actually the sponsor. Sponsor, okay. I was about to say, you're one very tall student. <laughs> yes, sir. 
Uh, they're doing pretty good today. I think we've had some pretty good times. Our first buggy's in first place as of right now, so I haven't saw their unofficial time yet. Was that based on the assembly time as well? Yes, sir. It was yesterday's run and the assembly time. We're yeah, first place so far. That's fantastic. You've got to be proud of your kids. Yes, sir. I'm very proud. They put a lot of work into it. They worked hard. You know, they did all of our modifications. We have our own machine shop where they did their own work and really practiced hard. It's not very often that you see a high school team that is able to, do they do the welding as well? Yes, sir, we do. We send it down to our ag shop. The students do all of our welding. We try to make them as responsible as on every part of it. Making that sharp right-hand turn on obstacle number six. Did they get enough momentum coming out of that turn? No, they did not. Oh, it's almost like through. he walked his way over those ridges. This is a technique that we hadn't seen much is, is it looks like they are kind of walking the vehicle, trying to get one, uh, one of the wheels over one of the ridges and then get the other one over and then continue on. Trying to continue to push their way through now. Obstacle number five. They're on Heritage Row. Time to pick up some speed as they hit obstacle number six. Oh, that's a little, not quite fast enough. However, once again, it looks like they're going to be able to muscle their way through. No penalties on obstacle number six. That is some good news. Unfortunately, they'll need to pick up the pace. We're not sure if the uh, front driver looks like he stopped pedaling. It is possible his chain has broken or has come off the gear. See if he's going to take a moment to try to fix the uh, fix the chain, or if he's just going to have to push. You're not drinking. You're not thinking. Now both riders have come off the buggy to try to see if they can push their way over obstacle number eight. All right, having cleared that one, let's see how they decide to handle the the tight turn there. So you've got the uh, male rider has decided to go ahead and push on the back side of it while the female rider is steering from the front. Barely through obstacle number nine and starting on obstacle number 10. Getting through that one as well. We need to get ready for an interview. We're having, definitely having to do it the hard way <laughs> by pushing it, but they are showing some intestinal fortitude for doing so. Five and a half minutes gone now in their 10 minute run. As they enter the crater around the lunar excursion module. Yeah. 
Just passing six minutes now as Purdue University Calumet Team 2 leaves the uh, Lunar Crater. Team number 63 now trying to decide how much further they're going to be able to make it. They're at five minutes and 40 seconds as they approach obstacle number nine. So let's head on down to the starting line to see who's next on the block. Lori? Hey, oh, it's Jennifer. Oh, excuse so. me. I'm sorry, Jennifer. It's okay. It's like 77 <laughs> degrees down here on the concrete, and <laughs> everyone's roasting, even though it's really not that warm for April. Um, anyway, up at the starting line is Ohio State, and we have our first driver. Lori and Beachy. All righty. And our second driver is? Ben Harris. And Ben, how did you guys do yesterday? We had quite a few technical difficulties. Didn't quite make it through. I'm glad that you can laugh at that today. Um, what exactly went wrong? Can you tell us? <laughs> oh. Or what? how many things went wrong? A ton of stuff went wrong, but wheel fell off and that was it, so. Okay, that sort of took you out. That yep, that was the end. Okay, so more positive thinking today. Of course, of course, of course. We're gonna make it. All right, and how, how long does it take you generally to build a buggy like this? Um, this one we just kind of revamped from last year, so. I don't really have a good time frame. I mean, we worked on it, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> a, lot. a lot of time. <laughs> How many um, people are on your team? There's 10 of us. Okay. And um, are, is that part of a class that you have at school, or is it just an after-school activity? After school. So really, this is a lot of hard work for no class credit. Right. Are you all hoping to be engineers? Are you all engineering students? All of us are welding engineers right now. We've had other mainly engineer majors with us. All right, well, Ohio State, Buckeyes, good luck to you today. Back to you, Bill. Thanks very much, Jennifer.